Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms of premenstrual syndrome or PMS. So we're not going to get into all the details with regards to premenstrual syndrome in this lesson. If you want more information, please check out my full lesson on this topic. But this lesson we're entirely talking about signs and symptoms of PMS. But before we get into that, I just want to give a brief introduction of what PMS is. It is a condition involving cyclic and recurrent episodes of behavioral, psychological, and physical symptoms associated with the latter half of the menstrual cycle or the luteal phase. We're going to get into a bit more detail here in a moment. So it involves cyclic, so it follows the cycle, the menstrual cycle, and it's recurrent. So each menstrual cycle or each latter half of the menstrual cycle, individuals with this condition have characteristic signs and symptoms. And what is important to note with regards to these symptoms is that they occur at the end of the luteal phase and the symptoms resolve after initiation of menses or the period. And oftentimes it's an average of six days of symptoms. It can be more than that, but a lot of times you're going to see the worst symptoms occurring four days before your period and two days into your period. And after that, the symptoms resolve. So I'm going to talk briefly about the physiology of the menstrual cycle, just so we can understand a bit more as to why this is occurring. Now, in a classic 28-day menstrual cycle, and not all menstrual cycles are 28 days, but a classic menstrual cycle is 28 days, and it's split up into the follicular phase and the luteal phase. Now, the follicular phase starts at the beginning of your period, so menstruation, and it goes until the 14th day on average. And at that point, ovulation occurs. Again, this does not occur at the same time with every individual, but these are average numbers. Now in the second half of the menstrual cycle, after ovulation occurs, is the luteal phase. And again, the luteal phase is the second half of the menstrual cycle occurring after ovulation until the beginning of menstruation. And so again, the signs and symptoms of PMS occur during the luteal phase, during that second half of the menstrual cycle. And the reason that happens can be found by looking at these hormone levels. So with regards to estradiol, and estradiol is an estrogen, we see an increase, a peak at the time of ovulation, and it is higher in the second half of the menstrual cycle during the luteal phase. But as the luteal phase wears down, getting closer to menstruation, the estrogen or estradiol levels begin to decline. And we can also see that there's another hormone here as well, progesterone, which rapidly increases due to its production from the corpus luteum. And eventually it also declines rapidly as the luteal phase comes to an end and an individual approaches menstruation, all in the context of not being pregnant. So progesterone and estradiol levels decline and estradiol and progesterone have particular effects. And we're going to talk about these effects as we discuss why signs and symptoms of PMS occur. So the first group of signs and symptoms we're going to talk about in PMS are the behavioral signs and symptoms. So the first one is mood swings. So mood swings is actually one of the most common symptoms. And it is due to low serotonin levels. Now, you might be thinking, why do I bring up serotonin all of a sudden? Well, estradiol, that estrogen hormone we talked about earlier, actually has interactions with serotonin. And it seems that estradiol regulates serotonin activity. So as estradiol decreases, we can see serotonin levels also decreasing. And serotonin is the neurotransmitter that is classically thought to regulate mood and sleep and appetite and anxiety. And increasing serotonin levels is actually the goal of antidepressants like selective serotonin reptake inhibitors. So serotonin is very important here, and this can lead to mood swings. Now another symptom of PMS is irritability. Now this goes along with the mood swings. And this is also caused by low serotonin levels, and this can cause some impulsivity, irritability, and the mood swings. So again, estradiol's effects on serotonergic systems begins to decline as estradiol levels decrease during the second half of the menstrual cycle, during the luteal phase, just prior to menses. So again, mood swings and irritability are both symptoms of PMS. And another symptom of PMS is depression. And we just mentioned that serotonin is important with regards to your mood and depression. And Depression is actually a very common symptom in PMS, and it's again due to changing levels of estradiol and estradiol's mediation or regulation of serotonin. And as 
estradiol levels decrease in the luteal phase, this leads to low serotonin levels. So this also leads to a propensity for depression. Another symptom of PMS is anxiety. Again, this is also due to low serotonin levels and may also be related to alterations in dopamine levels as well with regards to some of the hormonal changes in the menstrual cycle. So again, depression, very common symptom due to changing levels of estradiol, decreasing levels of estradiol more specifically, leading to low levels of serotonin. And then the anxiety is also an issue due to low serotonin levels as well, but may also be due to alterations in dopamine levels. Now, some other symptoms of PMS include sensitivity to rejection. And again, sensitivity to rejection is also due to decreased serotonergic activity. So as you can see, due to that decreased estradiol level, we see decreased serotonin levels. So we see mood swings, we see irritability, we see depression, anxiety, and we see sensitivity to rejection. So a lot of effects due to that low serotonergic activity. We can also see decreased interest. This is also secondary to hormonal changes, maybe secondary to depressive symptoms as well. So sensitivity to rejection and decreased interest. We can also see an increased appetite. And the increased appetite can be due to a couple of different reasons. One is increased progesterone. Now, progesterone is, for the most part, elevated during the luteal phase, although it can decrease as the luteal phase goes on, especially once the corpus luteum has degenerated. But for the most part, we see increased progesterone levels, and progesterone is a stimulant of appetite. And then decreasing estrogen levels. Now, decreasing estrogen levels actually leads to stimulation of appetite as well. Estrogen levels themselves seem to inhibit appetite. So as there is higher progesterone levels, even in the latter part of the luteal phase, there's decreasing estrogen levels, and both of these can increase your appetite. So increased progesterone levels can increase appetite, and the decreased or decreasing estrogen levels can also stimulate the appetite as well. You can also see bloating being an issue with individuals who have PMS. This is actually one of the most common symptoms. So we see mood swings being common, we see depression, we see bloating being common as well. And again, this is due to changes in progesterone and estrogen. So as we can see, there's a lot of different effects due to those changes in those hormones. Estradiol, which is an estrogen, and progesterone. So again, increased appetite and bloating are symptoms of PMS. Now we'll move on to some physical signs and symptoms of PMS. One of them is sleep disturbances. So sleep disturbances can involve difficulty falling asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, and non-restful sleep. And again, these can be due to effects of that low serotonin we talked about before. So sleep disturbances can be quite common in PMS, and again, they involve difficulty falling asleep, so sleep onset insomnia, waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to get back to sleep, and non-restful sleep. So even when they do sleep throughout the night, they just don't feel rested. We can also see increased fatigue, and increased fatigue is actually, again, one of the most common symptoms along with bloating. And this is, again, a result of low serotonin levels. And increased fatigue can also be secondary to sleep disturbances as well, just not feeling rested. So again, sleep disturbances with issues getting to sleep, waking up in the middle of the night, and even if having a long sleep, not feeling rested. And then increased fatigue is also another issue which is one of the most common symptoms, and it's also a result of lower serotonin levels. And we can also see hot flashes occurring in women with PMS. So you might think, oh, hot flashes occur during menopause. And for the most part, it can, but if you do see hot flashes in women who are not peri- or postmenopausal, this is highly suggestive of PMS. So again, a lot of times we think of hot flashes in women who are peri- or postmenopausal, but you can see it in women who have PMS. And if the individual is not peri- or postmenopausal and you do see hot flashes, this is, again, very highly suggestive of PMS. You can also see dizziness in PMS. This is due to alterations in hormone levels. Now, this could be interpreted as presyncope or even vertigo. And with regards to presyncope, it may be due to lowered blood pressure. 
due to changes in hormone levels. And then we can also see breast tenderness as well in women who have PMS. So again, hot flashes. If you see it in individuals who are not peri or postmenopausal, likely due to PMS, we can see dizziness with PMS and breast tenderness as well. So if you want to learn more about premenstrual syndrome or PMS, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.